a very warm welcome to India Film Project Talk Shop brought to you by Sanyo in association with Himalayan. The guest that we have today, he is uh, in love with America. He is a mama's boy. He loves cooking and like how. But he also loves cooking stories on the screen and that is why he is here. The guest that we have today from Rahul Parzanya Dholakya to Rahul Rais Dholakya, he has come a long way. A very, very, very warm welcome, sir. Thank you so much. So to begin with, um, I'm not going to talk anything. I request you to just turn around because oh, a sweet. picture talks nice. thousand words. I think I was what, five or six at this time. Uh, six. Yeah, that's my mom, my sister Moa, and my yeah. dad, who's no more, may so rest in peace. So, if you have to share a fondest memory with your sister Moha, oh, fondest with memory, Raksha Ben, and with your dad Perry Dholakya, what would that be? I think a lot of memories are good because we are very close family, we close knit uh, family. Uh, Papa is no more, but. Uh, whenever he was there, so um, we can't really do without each other. Every, every morning and night, my mom and my sister FaceTime me from America every day. Every day? Every day. Wow. Uh, like, I spent two months right now in California with my mom and my sister because uh, I had not seen them for one and a half years. So then I spent two months over there. It was a great time. I think it was a superb time because we would just sit, chat, or, uh, go for walks, have coffee. And uh, I would watch shows which she likes. Ah. Uh, she is, and we would uh, cook and eat and have fun. So it was a great time. Rahul is Yaro ka Yar. I heard that while uh, you had the first day, first show of Rais in Mumbai, a lot of friends from America traveled down to Mumbai to yeah. just cheer his buddy. Uh, see, I've known uh, Sandeep Piran and all, uh, all those people who came here, uh, they flew down from America just so that they could be with me. Um, I've known them since 1990 or something like that. Uh, we used to do a dance competition over there. We used to, we used to organize it called Nayandas. Yeah. And uh, it ran for I think 23 or 24 years then uh, till we took a yeah years. yeah and it was before boogie woogie and all that so it ah. was a local talent dance competition okay. they actually it was their idea and then I helped them build it bigger okay. so we started it off together and we had a company then which we called 1947 Inc in, way back in 1990 I think but uh, how are you dance 24 I did, huh? years of running a dance competition yeah but I didn't dance uh, Rahul <laughs> yeah, never dances no no never Rahul doesn't like that <laughs> never but uh, <laughs> but the whole thing was to organize it and you know yes. encourage the local talent yes. in America you you are born and brought up in Bombay you've done your schooling from here your college from the masters and you know you flew to US generally people from across India aspirational Bollywood filmmakers they travel to Bombay from different parts of the country to spend time with people in Bollywood Rahul after being in Mumbai for all his life and traveling to US on and off he goes down to Ahmedabad messy street food uh, where, where he'll have those Bhatiar Gali in Ahmedabad, yeah. the VS Hospital Ki Gali where he'll have chai at a Kitli, local Kitli, street Kitli. See the best food you get anywhere in the world is going to be in the streets. Uh, and you are a non yeah. hardcore non-veg hardcore non or no? Uh, yes, hardcore yeah. non-veg. And I really enjoy it. And I cook also. So Rahul uh, is a chef. What is the USP? What is the best dish that you cook? Um, I don't know. I just cooked mutton curry the other day. Uh, then I make spaghetti with keema, ah. which I think is really cool. Uh, sometimes I make vegetarian, but I don't know how to make dal. <laughs> and rotli, the forget it. That is impossible. Uh, I the don't Gujarati think, fulka rotli, which is like... Yeah, and, but I don't think anybody should make that. Like my grandma used to say, is ke, uh, rotli to bairini bedi she. Huh. Which means that it's a shackles. Uh, and it's like slavery. So, <laughs> <laughs> Rahul as a person, um, we quite discussed about it. Now, Rahul as a filmmaker, if I have to describe Rahul in just one word for the kind of scripts that he has chosen all his life, you are fearless. Starting from 
Parzania to Lamha, where you had the Kashmir's burning issue being covered, to Rais. All films have been very controversial, so you need to be very fearless for doing this. So, did it come in your DNA that you are like this, or I you, you so. develop that quality? I think it's in the DNA because uh, if you look at it, my father was part of the uh, student movement in India, and uh, you know, if uh, you all are all from Gujarat University, uh, I wonder how many of you have seen that Kinara Wala in Khambi huh. over there. Huh. So he was with my father when he got shot. Ooh. And I think my father and Surya Kant Parikh and all of they got together and they built that Khambi. Okay. And, uh, or got it done. I mean, like, father was old at that time. He was like 75, 80 or whatever. Okay. But they, they had it. So I guess it's in the DNA. And uh, one thing I think uh, we all have been taught, I think that's what parents teach us, is that if you believe in something, go for it and don't worry about the consequences. Wow. So, I th that's what I tell everybody also, if you believe in something, go for it, don't worry about the consequences. If I can make from, I can make a film like Parzani and then I can also make a film like Rais, you can also do it. So, has it ever happened that Rahul Dholakya received some threat calls? A lot of times. Huh? Uh, yeah, <laughs> I'll give you one example which I think is really uh, relevant in today's times. Is when I was researching for uh, Lama, mm -hmm. uh, I was in Kashmir and uh, I was taken from one place to another to another to meet uh, one uh, uh, one militant who had been released from jail on parole after 16 years. Okay. And I was interviewing him in his room, and he had uh, I think killed a couple of hundred people maybe or with his, within their, uh, their things or something like that. And yeah. his uh, it was a room this big, and there was no furniture. There was one carpet, and there was that kangri which there because it was winter. And he had an AK-47 next to him and uh, I was chatting with him and he kept on for two hours, uh, he kept on and there was no one in sight, I mean there was just me and him and for two hours he kept on bitching about India and saying that how the Indians had tortured him and how uh, they had pissed on the, on the religious books like Quran Sharif and all that and how they had really to tortured him uh, and his family and so that and how much he hated them. Right. So he really... Uh, was out to take revenge in that sense and yes. that was he was doing that was his maksad he was very happy with that after this whole thing and I'm like I've got to listen to what he has to say because that's I want to get that side of the story right. uh, so after that whole two hours of uh, rambling which he did uh, he asked me he said uh, Hindustan wapas kab ja rahe ho? okay now I'm at Srinagar and or out, outskirts of Srinagar okay. and he's saying Ab Hindustan wapas kab ja rahe ho? now I'm looking at him I look at the 47 <laughs> I'm like this guy has been bitching about India what do I tell him right now yeah? for two hours yeah he for two hours so two he's hours really he's got a lot of hate in him because he's been for whatever reasons he has his story True. and he says when are you going back to India and I'm like shit do I confront this guy or do I keep quiet or what do I do yeah but then I cannot keep quiet that's my problem also. So um, I looked in his eyes and I said, maybe Shayad Aapke liye Hindustan nahi hoga, lekin mere liye aaj bhi Hindustan hai. And then I'm like, shit, it's going to go. <laughs> the gun is going to go. <laughs> but he looks me in the eye and then he says, I like your spirit. So why don't you eat and go? Khana ka ke I said, Pagal hai kya? <laughs> like, no, I got to go now. That, so we had, so there are lots of stories like this. Uh, which which one encounters but one has to be I think if you're honest and you know what you're doing then True. so all that is there so so it was a great uh, experience of meeting people meeting all kinds of people. considering yeah. the research part that you just spoke about when you are dealing with a controversial uh, issue like it could be Kashmir or it could be Gujarat riots yeah. where Parzania was about yeah research takes a lot of time actually because and also the scripts also it's the how best how many drafts do you write about I don't know I, I forget, I, I lose count. Okay, then maybe I don't even make the film. You know, it's like that. I must have written about, like there's one script which I've written. It's about, we've done about, about 60, 70 probably drafts or rewrites or whatever you call it. Mm -hmm. And I'm not doing that film right now. So it's it's like, it's okay. But that's the fun. You don't regret then? No, never. Because oh, I always enjoy the process. Uh, it's the process yeah. which is important. I spend a lot of time in researching. You meet so many different people. You yeah. get so much different worldviews and perspectives. Yes. Okay, uh, which 
there's one thing sitting in juhu in my house and or in california and writing a script assuming that the world is this looking at twitter and facebook about it it's another going into the world and talking to them right you know because a lot of times you don't get the real perspective sitting in your flats uh so i i enjoy that so that takes time and research takes time, time. so it takes about like race took about 2 3 years i mean with uh, hari then vashi and neeraj we spent a lot of time uh, it and it's awesome. fun actually because you build friends for life you know when you're doing uh, it's not a writer and a director yes. they are all making the film it's the democratic spirit of making a film which is which is what i try to imbibe that culture and and uh, pass that culture to my friends uh, and my colleagues i i know the co-writers th- who have been part of race you know beat ashish vashi or beat beat harit mehta so they they all have that journalistic background so uh, considering uh, you people what you people write i believe you have all been on on one plate as yeah. far as the thought process is concerned has it ever happened that you had a difference of opinion of Creative. course of course you always have i mean uh, there there are different views there are different versions uh we always have difference of opinions it's not even and it's not even after writing the script it's when you shoot it and then we are doing the final edit of the film then also we may have different of opinions uh that this scene should be there this should not there but this scene the reason why i call my writers even in the edits right. is because somewhere down the line i might have forgotten some process because of why did we have this scene we had this scene because we wanted to say this right and that if we remove that then we lose connections so sometimes they come in because they've been away from the project for such a long time yes so we've had difference of opinions but it's always in the benefit of the film it's never about i am the director therefore i will say it this way there will be times there have been times like there this in been. past with with maybe one incident at times with someone right you know so and sometimes i have also let go what i have done because ultimately it's what the film wants and not what you want right so how how have you managed those uh, stars that you've got since the beginning the stature of stars like starting with nasuruddin shah being a part of your film to sanjay dutt being a part of lamha to sharukh khan being part of rais you've been very lucky i've also. been very fortunate yeah. uh, i think i've got the best actors so what the is best that on people. your side that you know i don't know i think uh, been god has been kind <laughs> what else can i say and they've been but kind you have to have a trick which and, you have to and, share the and secret they, and they've been kind uh, to do this films and i think the important thing is the script and the story uh, which is what you're telling when with how, with with that honesty if you're telling that story and sincerity then they uh, probably uh, share the same vision as you do and that helps because uh, i mean each one of them is a legend in their own way so now if we create a scene right now yeah yeah i play a game with you okay. this is called build a scene okay where i give you a character a yeah. location and a property okay yeah you have to build a scene out of that the characters that you have is a couple all right a wife who is very aspirational she wants to make a career for herself okay a husband who is very regressive he's not at all progressive a conservative husband right. so there's a set of couple the location is a uh, statue of liberty okay which is all about freedom right and uh, the property is a bag full of money full of money demonetized notes or regular notes <laughs> the legalized notes <laughs> okay <laughs> okay so let's start with the basics is that uh, we have a lady who is aspirational yes uh, we have a man who is regressive yes and we have money yes a, at statue of liberty yes all right so let's uh, say this lady is uh, say uh, what name priya okay, okay. she is priya she is about around 28 29 okay okay uh, she is living in america in new jersey in okay. edison new jersey okay oak tree road to be precise uh, <laughs> okay. husband is hasmuk patel okay uh, who is probably 8 years older than him her, her. Uh, she is probably come from africa uh, she do you know those uh, what is the eloka and all they speak now that time <laughs> got it so she is that type of a girl she is come from africa 
she wanted to achieve live the american dream okay she got stuck with this hasmuk patel who calls himself harry patel okay uh, all right and hasmuk is fat he is balding and he runs a convenience store okay okay it's a 711 or something like that or a crowsers okay which is more native to jersey he runs that and okay. his morning begins with him start going to the crowser okay and getting out at night when his second shift comes sometimes he has to work weekends also and he's a boring guy boring. all right Absolutely. his only interest is selling that cutting out the newspaper ka mastheads uh, because you get refund in that <laughs> uh, coupons he takes and he takes home on sundays they make the list for coupons for so which they go by 299 or whatever it is typical patel bhai so patel is a regressive guy his he probably lives with his parents okay. who sit outside in dhoti and drink chai and smoke beedis uh he's got no american friends okay. though he speaks with a very bad american accent ke beta kaap che tya aur pag ma trump aayo che mane uh okay if there's a kissing scene he asks he fast forwards it so that his children cannot see it he's that boring okay got okay it. she is now stuck with this man she wants to divorce but she can't because she's got children and she's got that typical indian conservative values okay she likes to keep bensons in her pocket she'll go smoke but then she'll have toothpaste and she'll rub it before she comes into the house she has a girls night out where she goes to fridays and she has those tequila shots or long island iced tea uh but this guy is jay swami narayan so <laughs> so there's no there's no meat in it place she loves her steaks okay medium rare to be precise uh nitty gritty so <laughs> so that's how she is This guy drives a 1989 Toyota Corolla, which has got about 175,000 miles on it. <laughs> She wants the latest Mercedes, Lexus, or BMW because that's the in thing. Obviously, they can't afford it. So one day she loses it and she says that I want to do my own business. I want to start something. There's a big. Uh, she wants to she, uh, make costumes like what Madhuri Dixit wore in Chane Ke Khet Me or whatever it is. <laughs> or uh, what alia bhatt is born in badrinath or something like that she wants to make those things she wants to open a boutique store which she will sell from those stores and the, but but this guy will not he is chingus so he will not let anything i mean in the winter he will put the heater off and it will you know he is that type of a person ac to chalu hi nahi hoga because there is no ac chance so he is that type of a person so she wants to start this business of hers and this guy won't let it do so one day she decides ki okay, i am going to raid this guy's crowsers or whatever shop is take all the bloody cash and run away okay so then there becomes a chase she goes she sets up with her friends or whatever it is she says today i'll work oh he say how oh, wonderful you're going to work she says yeah you know you take a rest and all that maybe he has to go to social security to get some pension or something like that so he the so he goes she takes she just takes all the money from him because he keeps it in a tijori in the basement of the shop she takes the money she gets into the train and she runs Now this guy finds out that he is she is there so this fatso is running after her <laughs> she ends up at the statue of liberty and she runs up on top with a bag full of money and she's going to throw it now everything what he loved in his life his whole savings is everything over here she says are you going to let me do my business or not ha huh. and this guy is like crazy wait i'm coming up i'm coming up by the time he comes up she says that listen he tries to reason with her she says apna sanskar am che tem che tu karish to am karish whatever he starts saying that she gets so mad the statue of liberty gets frustrated uh-huh. on top is uh-huh. holding the torch gets so upset that here i am the symbol of freedom and here this regressive son of a bitch is is screwing her happiness <laughs> takes the torch she takes the torch and shoves it up his bum and this guy goes fire and he jumps down into the ocean where he dies <laughs> and she takes the money and she goes home Right now, was so involved, okay. Rahul. They they were all imagining Priya Hasmuk Bhai Patel as the hero who yeah. did it. Amazing. All right, the next thing <laughs> we're going to have right up on the screen. Let's get real. We'll show you a few tweets. Okay. Uh, we know which are about you and your films. Okay. Your reaction on that. All we right. begin with it. Yeah, yeah, sure. The so interesting part here, which I noticed, and I thought I should ask you, is Rahul Dholakia's net worth. Net worth? <laughs> yes, that's Seriously? what people have searched about Rahul the maximum time. Oh, yeah. My God, why are they? <laughs> I'll tell them right now. I don't own a flat. 
I live in a rental flat uh, in Bombay. I have a flat in Ahmedabad, which is a small flat where there's no value only to the flats in Ahmedabad. Uh, so I have no other assets. I travel in rickshaw most of the times or Uber and now I have a car. Thank God, thanks to Rais. <laughs> but, <laughs> so I'm, my worth is, okay. I'm pretty worthless as far as that is concerned. Okay. How wonderful Dawn Abdul Latif is real. How SRK showed Abdul Latif and Rais. But the film is not about Abdul Latif. So Ankur Singh, you can take back your pictures. You have made box of his Rais. Ah, this is Twinkles. She's very sweet. She's a lovely friend. And uh, she's a very close friend. In fact, Dimple and Twinkle both had come for Nayandas. Okay. Uh, so I've known them since I think 94, 95, I think. First question that strikes my mind is why not Akshay Kumar ever? I don't know. Yeah. First of all, Akshay Kumar is a very big actor. Uh, he's, a, he's a very senior actor. He's a very, very busy actor. Uh, so there has to be a subject which he will like, which I will like, will, whether he will do the film, not do the film. So. But then how did you make your way to Shah Rukh Khan then? Shah Rukh Khan was purely uh, Ritesh and Varan actually because of them. Okay. Because I had met them and uh, they had asked me, whom do you want? Uh, name five and I said one, Shahrukh and they said ha 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 <laughs> this is or naam bol so I said ye hai so he said why so then we told him the reason or whatever it is he said okay let me try and that's how so but the then even to, Farhan and Ritesh Sidhwani they are not easily approachable people yeah but she uh, uh, Dimple got me in touch with Farhan so she introduced me to Farhan that's why I have her name in the thanks of uh, Rais yes alright and the Next tweet is here oh up on the screen. Aren't we overreacting to anyone who says anything that we do not agree upon? Shouldn't we give even a breathing room to opposing views? I, I totally agree with this. In today's time, everybody just reacts to everything over the top and then they forget about it also. Where's the conviction? Where's the passion? And then we are doing so much. Honestly, we become very, very, uh, uh, we want to voice our opinions on everything. and. It's on social media. It's and it's social media is the easiest way to do it, you know, because you don't. So you know, the best thing sometimes I feel is that we switch off from the social media. Your life is different. Yes. You become you so relaxed. You detox your yeah, mind. Yeah, everything is like this. When I was there, most of the time I was off. Uh, in the sense, don't check the thing and all that because sometimes you then you react. Somebody writes something and then you have to react. It's time. You feel like reaction. reacting, or you it upsets you. Uh, you know, they don't understand when they say something. Ke, something bad but it affects you it upsets you so it's better not to read then or you be like Parish Rawal or uh, where you react with humor yes he reacts beautifully yes. with humor he answers every tweet and he insults the person also yes whether he's right Outright. or wrong he's like oh you're so dumb that I'm but I'm too busy to ignore you or something like that importance <laughs> So while we discuss this particular tweet uh, do you think people the, you know if, if I have to ask your reaction on India getting intolerant issue, which is being discussed and done <coughs> to death. What is Rahul Dholakya's reaction? No, I think, see, what is happening is that we are becoming more vocal about everything. And at the same time, there is a certain amount of responsibility which comes with being vocal, which we are not being, uh, we are not accepting. And there's a thin line. Yeah, because, see, you saying something today, for example, if I were to say, uh, like I would say that I hate loudspeakers. Uh, I, there's a building next to mine which keeps on playing uh, all night. They have this music, right. and I don't like it. Like Sonu Nigam's controversy, controversy. or whatever. People will start reacting it in both ways, and all of a sudden you will start taking sides, and it will become Hindus versus Muslims or Bhaks versus non-Bhaks. Anyhow, they'll be. Wow, why are we making taking sides in all these things? I mean, where is the question of it being? Like Bahubali all of a sudden is like Hindus and all that. Where Hindu and Muslim comes in all this shit there. Yeah. So why are we like this? With anything for that matter. We just so... We, and we just... And I, I'm guaranteeing you 9 out of 10 people don't even believe in what they say. Yes. I think it's fashion. I think... Herds of shit. Because, so we, they have all made, follow. because we have made it into such a situation that either it's my way or the other way. So you're on, there's no such thing as central, there's no such thing as liberal, either it's left or right. And life is not like that. 
the world is not like that but it's becoming like that it is. and it's not just india it's everywhere it's everywhere agree <coughs> all right the next round which i have here is called in a jiffy so it's kind of a rapid fire round where you have to answer in the shortest time possible can i get to ask you also in a jiffy no sir <laughs> not at all <laughs> we'll have to then change the couches now that's why i don't mind <laughs> okay we begin with the first one person from the industry whom you can call at 3 am in the night there are many paresh Name one paresh travel last time you lied and to whom right now to you <laughs> <laughs> okay bhag mil kha bhag versus chak de india chak de india item songs lela are you diet conscious yes very are you spiritual yes Favorite Hitchcock film? Psycho. Golf or cricket? Cricket. iPhone or Android? iPhone. Marriage? Never. Why? Happy. Last handwritten letter you wrote, and to whom? I don't remember. It's been ages. Five of your favorite films? Mine. Hollywood, Bollywood, any? Yes. My all my films. <laughs> no. You you could do you could no, name no. them absolutely. I think um, if baby. you look at it, I love the Godfather trilogy. I like uh, Life is Beautiful cinema parody. So uh, Breathless of Godard, uh, eight and a half minutes, four hundred blows. Day shoots or night shoots? Night shoots. La La Land or the Salesman? Salesman. Send a tweet to Sunny Leone. Hi. Send a tweet to Dimple Kapadia. Hello. Send a tweet to Sanjay Dutt. What, what can I say to him? Been long time. Okay, if the following films were to be remade, who would you cast? Okay. Diwar. Diwar, I would cast. It would be good with Salman and Shah Rukh. Wow, good fellas. Oh, there are a lot. Okay, for for uh, De Niro's role. I would take uh, Charu because he's race. Uh, then there would be uh, for and this one Joe Pesci would be whom? Yeah, he would have to take somebody really cool. Nawaz, Nawaz would be very good. Joe Pesci. You can take uh, Irfan also in the film. This round is called On the Rocks. You have to rate out of ten. Okay. We go ahead. Anxiety level on the day of release. One. <laughs> Excitement level on first day of the shoot. Ten. Shah Rukh Khan's Ravan. Six. Alia Bhatt. Nine. Your laziness level. Ten. <laughs> okay. Narcos. About seven. Okay. Like or dislike. You just move this or this. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Being in front of the camera, taking selfies, storyboarding, spoofs. <laughs> in between, <laughs> giving an autograph, photograph, Martin Scorsese. Okay. Like, 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 like. <laughs> <laughs> All right. After like, dislike. The next we have is awards. The first being best Hollywood movie of two thousand and sixteen. Get lost. Most hardworking actor. If you have to choose out of three. Shah Rukh Khan. Very hardworking. I give you three choices. No, I don't need three choices. No Nasir Saab. No. Uh, no Sanjay Dutt. No. No Jimmy Shergill. No. Shah Rukh Khan. No, Shah Rukh Khan. Wow. Best musical film. Best musical film. All Indian films are musical only, no? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Next project which we should look up to from Rahul Dhulakia. I don't know. Next one year for Rahul Dhulakia would be like busy, hopefully traveling. You plan your trips or there are those unplanned? No, I plan, but I plan it on my own. So it's like it's not like six months in advance. It's like six, not even six weeks in advance, six days in six advance. Weeks. And even that changes. So it was. Absolutely amazing speaking to you. Very upfront, 
very honest, very much to the point, very clear about what you want to say and this is what we actually expected out of the fearless director that I have sitting in front of me. Thank you so much Rahul Dholakia for being here and I hope that you enjoyed being thank here. Thank you, thank you so much. Alright, I have a question for you uh, for which you can win some tickets. Um, what is the name of the real Parzan in my film Parzania? Uh, the name of the person, who boy who is still missing. Tell me the real name of the boy who is still missing in Parzania and you'll win some tickets. Thank you.